Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. So Fox News decided to fire Bill O'Reilly. And they fired him for the following reasons. The New York Times released an article that revealed that Bill O'Reilly and Fox News had settled like five sexual harassment cases that had been uh, filed or complaints that had been raised against him. They quietly settled those cases and they um, had non-disclosure agreements with the complainants. So for a very long time, people did not know about these allegations and they were revealed in that New York Times article. And a lot of this stuff came to surface after a white woman by the name of Wendy Welsh, um, once she began to publicly complain about sexual harassment, all of this attention had been drawn to the practices at Fox News because Fox News had already been under fire because of Roger Ailes, you know, one of the managers or owners who had been accused of multiple incidents of sexual harassment. And finally he was forced out. So they were already being scrutinized for that reason. But then once this came out, this just brought more attention to Fox News and its sexist practices. You know, they created an environment, apparently, that tolerated sexual harassment. Because you can't have a pattern of harassment going on this long, you know, without them taking any kind of real action against the people who are accused of doing that, without it obviously being accepted practice at Fox News. I mean, they had repeatedly entered settlement agreements with these uh, people who raised these allegations, and they continued to allow Bill O'Reilly to continue to do what he does, to continue to serve as a, a Fox News host and all that kind of stuff. They allowed that to continue because he was generating money for them. You know, he was profiting them. So they didn't mind, you know, his sexual harassment of women and all that kind of stuff they tolerated it in fact they paid out all these millions of dollars because in the, at the end of the day they were making more money than they were losing on him and you know the fact that they would settle those claims for those substantial amounts of money you know just speaks to the fact that those claims obviously had some kind of merit to them you don't settle cases for millions of dollars if they don't have some merit to them, if people don't have legitimate arguments that can be raised in court. Frivolous claims don't settle for millions of dollars. So, you know, Bill O'Reilly's allegations that, you know, these assertions are unfounded and all that kind of stuff are just silly. And then this woman who recently came out and about these sexual harassment allegations, you know, her name is Dr. Walsh, if I'm not mistaken, she drew a lot of attention to this issue. And the thing that made her case particularly different, different, you know, was the fact that she openly said that she's not seeking money. She didn't file a lawsuit. Uh, she simply was asking for an investigation. And Fox News conducted their investigation. And they conducted this investigation after they had come under pressure, after all these advertisers decided to back out of uh, sponsoring the O'Reilly Factor. I think it was like close to 50 advertisers, if I'm not mistaken. So that began to affect their bottom line. And that's what made a difference here because they didn't care anything about the well being of women. It was never about that. Because if they cared about the well being of women, they wouldn't have allowed this man to continue to harass women and to continue to uh, work at Fox News. They simply wouldn't. So, you know, this is a lesson. This is a lesson that a lot of people can learn. I mean, in terms of effect and change, a lot of times it's not about appealing to someone's conscience, you know, appealing to what's right and what's wrong. Often it comes down to dollars. Often you have to affect these people's bottom line in order to force them to take action. And I think that African-Americans need to learn from this example, learn how to um, to organize around financial matters to make a difference. Organize against advertisers, for instance. Advertisers that 
have their products advertised on racist programs. That's what people need to do. And I know that for a long time, Color of Change has been doing this. You know, they have been pressing the issue. Um, and, you know, I commend them for that. And I'm glad to see O'Reilly go. And the reason why I'm glad to see him go is because he is a racist. He's a bigot. He has uh, repeatedly made racist statements about African Americans. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the kind of things that he has said and done, I will include a link to an article that details some of the things that he has said, you know, a lot of the racist things that he has said so that you can read that for yourself. So nobody is losing any sleep because this guy lost his job. In fact, you know, people should be popping bottles <laughs> and celebrating. But, um, you know, it's just a temporary celebration because we know what Fox News is. It's a, a bastion of hatred and right wing extremism. It's a uh, like a haven for hate. It is a haven for racism and bigotry. So I wouldn't be surprised if they don't find somebody else to simply take on the same role that Bill O'Reilly had, you know, to espouse the same hatred that Bill O'Reilly espoused. So this is a temporary victory, but I think that we again can learn from this and we need to mobilize to affect these people's bottom lines, whether we're talking about politicians or we're talking about these um, television personalities or businesses. You know, we need to organize around economic issues, you know, use economics as a, as a means of protest. So those are my two cents. You know, tell me what you think. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace.